Well, hello, hello. I hope you had an amazing day and I hope you're ready for some drawing goodness. Um, I have a really fun lesson prepared for us. I worked a little bit, researched a little bit, set some things into motion so we can draw for about an hour, maybe a little bit more on um, improving our profile portraiture skills. So how do we draw the figure from a profile view? You'll learn about which landmarks to look for. You'll learn about um, the proportions. You'll learn about um, some parts of the face that we tend to forget about and uh, how to put it all together. And we'll do this um, for about an hour. We'll have um, 15 minutes per image. And so we'll be working on four. So it gives you plenty of time to try again and try again and try again. So I hope you're game for that. Um, if you've never been here, my name is Carolyn Peters. I'm the owner of Cura Studios, an online studio where I teach classical drawing skills. So artists like you can build a very solid foundation to explore your creative voice from. And every Thursday we get together to practice. It's so much easier to practice together as a group with a coach, a cheerleader, somebody who has a little bit of direction for you. And you know, you can turn me off too. You can just enjoy the, 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 reference images and just do your own thing. But um, I think it's useful to have this place to report to and just have this impetus to, uh, to get you going. So that's the idea behind these sketch sessions. And I see Jacob is in the house, Chris, Ted, and we have, is it Myrna? Wonderful, I'm so glad to see everybody here and I hope your pencils are sharp and ready to go. Um, I'm gonna dive right in, um, just a heads up, the way you're going to get the most out of this, of course, is that you draw along, right? You can watch. It's going to be nice, but it's you know much more interesting and intriguing if you're doing it along with us. And to have a good time when you draw, it's best to have a big screen. So if you're watching this on a small iPad, it might be a little bit hard sometimes for you to see the reference image big enough. So if you have a bigger laptop or a desktop computer, that might be your best bet for it. OK, so let's dive in. Um, I'm excited. Portraiture is always fun. Um, the first thing we want to look at when we draw a head in profile is what is the head position? Now, this is a very simple thing to look at, but it is key. Let me just grab my trusty helper here. What you want to look for is, hey, Trish, good to see you. Or Trisha, sorry, not, Tr not Trish. Um, what, the first thing you want to look for is, is the head actually level? You know, like the person isn't looking up or down. Or do we have something like this happening? Or do we have something like that happening? Now, again, it might not seem like a big deal, but it is because especially when we align our, our features later on, we get into trouble if you don't think about this first. And the other thing, um, not to make it too complicated, but you know, if you're a little bit more advanced, you can start thinking about this too. Not just what is the model's position, but what is your position to the model? Are you looking down at the model or are you looking up at the model? So again, I don't know if, they will, if, it will, if it will come up in the reference footage. If it does, I'll be sure to address it. Um, so okay, that's step number one, head position. Number two, we want to become very familiar with the eye socket structure. So if you look at the eye socket, I know it's kind of blown out because I have so many lights going on. Let's see, um, here. If you look at the eye socket like this, you can see how there's like an arc being described between the upper edges of the brow. We can call it the brow ridge, the upper edge of the eye socket, same thing, but it's basically like a half arc or like a rainbow arc, right? And we want to become familiar what happens with that when we turn it to its side. And I drew something out on a piece of paper for you that I'll switch the camera to later on, but just planting that seed, um, what happens to this brow ridge as well as the cheek ridge? So from the, the cheeks here to the brows, this is our eye socket. That structure, you're gonna become very familiar with how that behaves on a side view. And again, I'll show you in just a couple of minutes. Number three, you wanna know well, of course you want to know all kinds of landmarks like the brows and the cheek and where the nose comes out. But for a profile in particular, let me tell you which landmark rhythm you want to keep tabs on. It's a landmark rhythm that goes from again, how do I, there we go. Um, this here, this here is your 
external auditory meatus, which is just, you know, your ear hole, <laughs> from your ear hole, actually from the tip of your ears, if you go over to the cheekbone and then to the chin, that kind of creates this arc. And that arc is going to be really handy when we draw our profile portraits later on tonight. Just setting them down here. And um, so, okay, it's ear, cheek, to chin. The other thing you want to look for is, um, sorry, I have my notes over here and want to make sure that I read this. Um, you want to make sure that your, your ear and brow, that those are aligned and that your bottom of the ear and the bottom of the nose are aligned. So brow to top of the ear, bottom of the ear, bottom of the nose. So not the tip of the nose, bottom of the nose. So, and that even if the person is looking down or up, that holds true. So that alignment, this is a landmark alignment, what we call, um, you wanna check that on your drawing. Is that true? Or did you put your ear way up high? Or did you put your ear kind of um, at a weird kilter? Okay. Number four, we want to figure out what kind of a muzzle type are we looking at? So what I mean by muzzle type is from, from here on to here. That's our muzzle. And you probably noticed that some people, their chins are tucked in, like they're kind of recessed. Is that the word? Recessed? They're kind of set back. That's what I'm trying to say. And some people, their chins are coming out, right? And some people have a very prominent nose and some people have a very flat nose. So in a profile, that's like the prime real estate that we need to pay attention to. So again, we want to check that in our drawing, we have it well captured by aligning with a vertical from here to here. How does that match up? And again, I'll show you in the drawing process so it'll make sense as we draw. And then the last thing, um, you want to pay attention to the under jaw and what kind of a strange shape is being created there. That's usually what people forget about. Like, you know, we think about the chin, right? Because we, we talk about it in real life, but we rarely talk about the under jaw. Um, and so we forget that there's a shape for that thing. So the under jaw is one forgotten part of the face we need to address in a profile. And then also, especially if it's zoomed out enough and not just the head, you don't want to have a neck. And there is a different alignment between the back of the head and the back of the neck, excuse me, back of the neck and the front of the neck. So we'll address that alignment. So let me switch the cameras over and I'll show you what I drew out ahead of time. Let me scoot this and transition. Okay. So you can see my notes here. The first thing I want to address is the head position. Again, we want to clarify just with a simple guitar pick shape, kind of a rounded triangle. Is this person tilting their head up a little bit? Is it truly straight? See how then the, the front of that profile is straight up and down. And then here we have like this kind of weird rounded triangle or is that face angled down with the top of the head being here and then this kind of being the back of the head so as simple as this that's what we want to begin with very lightly of course so we can erase it out later on i was talking about the eye socket structure right so here is that brow arc and then here is that bottom shelf which is basically the cheekbones so from a frontal position both sides are the same and we have this beautiful arc. Now, if you turn it three quarter, see how that arc has its high point offset and we have a bigger front portion, a smaller back portion. And then we turn it even more into a profile and we lose this beautiful arc. But instead, what we have left is kind of like this weird kind of is that a chevron? I don't know. It's like a weird arrow shape almost, right? And then when, within that kind of arrow shape, we have our eyeball. And so this is something that's important because, because of how this is structured, it forces an angle onto the eye. So when you draw your lids later on, you want to make sure that the upper lid is sticking out further than the lower lid. And um, depending on how zoomed in the photo reference is, so in this one, it wouldn't be the case, you might even be able to see the underside of the lid. 
and you see how there's a thickness to the underside of that lid and that disappears eventually. So what I made orangey here, um, that is the thickness of the lid. And then here we can see the thickness of the lower lid as well. And so this is something that I would study if I were you. So you become really familiar with it. So I'm just mentioning it here. You can pause the video and kind of study it a little bit more, or you can even copy it. Um, but you can find this in most portrait drawing books, but I wanted to mention it before we dive in. So I'm gonna set the timer. We're gonna have about 15 minutes per drawing. And I'll, I'll verbalize as much as I can what I'm thinking about. And we'll go from there. So let's see, where am I on the screen? Okay. Let's scoot over. Okay, so in this here, I wanted to start us out with um, a image that's really straightforward straight head position she's not looking up or down and i'm see how light this is it's you're not seeing very much on the screen because i'm not pressing hard on purpose i want this to stay erasable um, but here i'm saying this is upright i'm kind of saying here's the top of the head and then i'm making this imaginary line kind of going behind her ear towards the chin just to give me a starting point for how big the head is what you can do this is a if you if, like if you're struggling with um structure you can even put a sphere in here just a perfect circle and if you cut this perfect circle in half if it's a hundred percent profile like a true true profile not like turned away from us a little bit too much not angling at us too much if you cut this in half the ear will be sitting in that back bottom quarter so you, the, the, the front of the ear, where the ear kind of connects into the side of the head, that's, I'm gonna draw this a little bit darker. So this is the halfway point of that sphere and the ear sits right in there. Okay, let's continue by plotting out some proportions. Since this is a perfectly um, positioned level head. I'm looking for where the hairline is. And then I go from hairline to chin, that distance here, I'm cutting that into thirds. And I'm guessing at first, one, two, three, double check one, two, oh, this is a little bit too long. Okay, a little bit too short, so here. I think I made my hairline just a little bit too low. Um, so that means I'll have to scoot my ear down a little bit. So all of these proportional guides, they're starting points. So you never just wanna like draw your head shape and then measure it out with a ruler and then be stuck in, like have it stuck in stone or like engraved in stone. Say, but this is the halfway point. You kind of keep wanna keep things flexible and fluid in the beginning. Okay, so, but see, I'm triple checking again, hairline to brow, brow to bottom of the nose, not tip of the nose, where the nose is growing out of the face, base of the nose to chin. I need those to be equal. And then I can start to look at, if this is the brow, then my eye socket is here. And I'm thinking back to this weird arrow shape that I showed you earlier on. And so then I can start to lightly lay in the nose. And again, I'm not over committing yet, but I wanna make sure that again, that part that is attaching to the dental mound, the, the outer upper lip, that that doesn't sag below my measurement here. Really important, it's so easy. Next thing is I'm looking at, um, this is called the keystone, the spot in between our eyes, the, the part of the nose that's right in between our eyes. I'm looking at that 
and I'm drawing a vertical line, like just with a pencil, I'm seeing how does this align with her chin, that, that kind of crease on her chin or above her chin. And like I'm literally holding out my, my pencil, my hand um, to the screen where I have my reference. I'm checking, is that, that crease above the chin sitting behind this part? Is it in alignment with this part or is it in front of that part? And so for me, when I hold it up, it's just a hair behind. So it's kind of right around here. So it's almost in alignment with this part right here. It's just set back a hair. And so that gives me now a good starting point for the arc of the dental mound. So our the outside of our lips, like the up, up, top part and bottom part, they're curved. And then you can, of course, do the same with a chin. It's like it's the, the tip of the chin jutting out beyond this way from the forehead, or is it set back that way? She has a very upright forehead. Again, here's where the hair is. for the hair I'm just going for the biggest shape first and so this is beautiful because she has that hair band behind her ear and we can use that to deal with the neck so I was saying earlier that the back of the neck that attachment is higher than the front of the neck so I'll be looking at that right now so if my brow is here and again, I want that to align with the ear. And if the base of the nose and the ear, bottom of the ear are here, kind of right behind that is where the cranium comes out. And that's where the neck starts. And be mindful if that is actually an upright angle or if there's a slant to it. We have this angle here. So a downward angle for the front of the neck. And that leads us now to this jaw underside that I was mentioning earlier. So let's talk about the jaw for a little while. The jaw, especially on men, it's more um, prominent, but it holds true for female models as well. We have three angles. We have the back of the jaw angle, which is fairly short and upright. Then we have a long slanted angle. And then we go to the chin. So always tease out those three angles more so than you see them, just for clarity. And then you complete that shape by going to where the underside of the jaw attaches to the neck. Now, of course, this is a fluid attachment, but if we had to make a decision, where would you draw this line? This is called a plane change. Plane changes are your friend when you want to make things look three-dimensional. If you've never heard of them, kind of file that information away. It's like, oh, plane changes something for me to look up sometime. Okay, so you see I have my structure now laid out. I kind of paid attention to my proportions, that hairline to brow, brow to nose, nose to chin. I made sure that my brow aligns with the top of the ear, nose aligns with the bottom of the ear. Uh, I have my back of neck, front of the neck at an angle. And again, that neck, I don't know if it's again, I might not have said it yet, that is a bendy slanted tube. It's not upright. And that delivers a lower pit of the neck and a higher, I don't know what the back of the neck is called there, but you know what I mean. So let's get back and see if I can, if I have some time to work a little bit on the features more. 
so brown. So you might know that the tear duct is about halfway down the entire head. Okay, that would be right around here. Of course, the tear duct is overlapped here. Like, we can't see that because the, the eyeball is covering it. So I'm kind of looking, what angle do I see from the brow to the iris? So, um, you're asking if this is the Loomis method. You know, it, 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 it partially is, it's adapted, but I'm using a lot of what he is setting up. So he's definitely using the, the thirds proportions, like, you know, using the brow to the nose, to the chin, to the hairline, etc. That's a Loomis thing. Also kind of paying attention to that side plane. Uh, that's a Loomis thing. But many other uh, methods kind of draw on these landmarks as well. So I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm rigidly following his method right this moment, but it's totally informed by what he has outlined. So see, I, I began with this angle, making sure that there's a recess happening, and then I'm ghosting in my eyeball. And again, just how kind of putting the head shape in earlier, making the position correct, how that is so simple the ghosting in of the eyeball, it seems so dumb and simple, but it actually is useful because now when I go to stretch the lids over, I'm not going to make them too big or too small. And here I'm looking at that crease that's created in between the underbrow. I've decided that that's the technical term, the underbrow and the lid that kind of covers the eyeball. And then here. We have that thickness to the underside of the lid. I'm going to start erasing some of these lines so they're not so much in the way. And then I have here the outside of the lower lid. And then here a little bit, you see an indentation for where the, the bottom part of the eye socket starts. So we have ba if we have bags on, under our eyes, it's, um, you know, that saggy skin here kind of being stopped by the, the cheekbone. Okay, so let's see if I can get to the nose. So I'm going to begin by just ghosting in how big is the wing of her nose? How big is the ball of her nose? Kind of just getting a little bit of a sense for that proportion. Going to have a little bit of fun with the contour here, just the outer edge. Noticing one, two, three angles. So if you watch the nose practice session, you know that we can break the, the length of the nose into three um, main angles. So this short nasal bone area angle, then the length of the nose angle, and then the ball of the nose angle. So they're like one, two, three angles, and they're variable in angle and in length. And that kind of gets you the likeness of somebody. Okay, here's another plane change. Bottom of the nose to the more upward facing planes. Trying to find that nostril. Again, I'm not just trying to color it in as a pit of darkness. I'm trying to say, hey, look, this, this wing of the nose has a thickness. And so now I have to kind of pace myself and that's why I don't look nothing like her. You know, we have only 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, we can only do so much. So we have to cut our losses. In 15 minutes, you might get a good practice in on arranging, let's say the eye socket to nose, and you might have to let go of what's happening below and, and dialing that in 100%. But let's see what we can do. So here we have the tubercle of the lip. And then we have this arc. Coming down. And so now I want to align um, the corner of her mouth. If I put a vertical line there, how does that intersect with the eye? And I literally do that first on the reference with my pencil kind of sticking up in front. 
and then I do it on my drawing. And that's where I'm a little bit off. I think I have this eye too close to towards the front. And with portraits, especially if they're small, a sixteenth of an inch, a thirty-second of an inch makes a huge difference. So you might think to yourself when you're drawing, oh my god, it looks like total crap and like there's no way I can rectify this. And then you throw in the towel when in fact all you would have needed to do is maybe just shift a couple of shapes by a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, so first 15 minutes are over. Stop the timer here. So you see now, if I had more time, I'd start to futz around with the chin, make, uh, maybe drop that down a little bit. And this is actually a great lesson where you can see that we, we were very careful in measuring, right? You saw me three times measure, okay, this is the same as this is the same as this. And then we look up and it's like, shit looks nothing like her and that's because within these norms that we have handed to us by loomis and mr riley and whoever else um there are variations in real life so we begin with that don't inscribe it in stone and then start to tweak it not drastically because we will still want it to look structured and humanoid right but um we do need to allow ourselves to then okay let me drop this down a little bit more let me lean back and then assess okay let's do the next one hold on i need to have this ready and all right so you might have seen me draw this one on instagram the other day it's very beautiful drawing or pose the drawing came out all right too so if you haven't seen it yet there's a little reel okay 15 minutes here we go let's see what we can whip up Okay, so notice, what did we begin with? We began with a head position. We got a different one here. So now the, the front of the face is angled up. Not like drastically, but it is. Okay, and then, you know, if you like the idea of separating out your cranium from the facial mask, you can kind of ghost in your cranium or the brain is at home. And um, it's a little bit hard to see on her because she has that lower headband strap. But if you imagine where her brow is, her eyebrow, where would the corner of her eyebrow be? That's a good landmark. That's a Loomis landmark. And it helps you figure out, okay, this is the front of the face. This is the side of the face. Um, and as I said earlier, if you then find the halfway point here, um, the ear sits in the back bottom quarter. But I don't want to get ahead of myself too much. Lightly just kind of ghosting in. This might be where I'm putting the neck. This might be where I'm putting the chin. Um, and I do like beginning with my proportions. So hairline, she has bangs and headband. So as artists, we never just copy. We, we, we imagine we can see through things. We can see behind things. So if I kind of pulled her bangs up, where would the hairline be? Let's just say it's right here. And then here's the chin. And now I'm gonna cut this into thirds as best as I can, knowing full well, like we learned earlier, that this might still have to adjust, right? One, two, okay, let's try it a little bit bigger here. So I'm taking my measurement from my fingertip to here and drop it down, two, three. So right now this is where it brings me. I think it was the lower one here, okay. So brow to ear, that's my alignment. Let me work on the eye socket a little bit. So for the eye socket, aside from finding where the corner of the brow is and then following kind of this edge back, 
look for the cheekbone and and this model has this gorgeous cheekbone with a beautiful highlight on it so we're right where that highlight is that's the edge for that eye socket structure and again i'm keeping this erasable and then right around here is that keystone that part of the nose in between the eyes and that is what i'll kind of align later on to find how much her muzzle is jutting out for now i'm just ghosting in a nose not committing to it there we go and so now as i'm doing this keystone to chin that chin crease if I'm visually aligning those to me it looks like her chin is kind of sticking out beyond it And you can be intuitive about this, you know, you don't have to make it a math problem. Unless you enjoy that. Her mouth is also slightly open, so you might get a lower chin than your technical Loomis proportions. I'm looking for the back of the jaw, length of the jaw, to the chin rhythms, the three rhythms. And I search a lot when I draw. Those are ghost lines that I'll erase out. And then I look at that under jaw shape. And that kind of aligns with the eye almost. So I don't want to bring it back too much. Okay, and earlier in the intro, I was talking about that rhythm from the top of the ear over the cheek to the chin. So it doesn't, like there's not a line on the face, right? Like, at least I don't see one. I see the highlight on her cheek. I see that slight shadow under her cheekbone. Um, but if you can imagine right where the highlight is, if you kind of visually connect that to where the top of her ear would be, and then visually connect that with the... Um, what's it called chin it's called a chin um, then that gives you the separation between the side of your face and the front of the face and so all these planes are facing this way all these are facing that way it's a good thing to be aware of and so now they have all this kind of structural plotting done i can draw a little bit of what i see again and say okay let's get that um hair situation figured out how much like what kind of a shape do I see on the forehead here without getting too much into detail I just want to kind of map out how much do I see here okay and now I'm going to get into the eye just like last time I'm first going to ghost in an eyeball and so when you're putting in that spherical shape for the eyeball if you're asking well how how do I know how big to make it um, look at the creases at the end of the eye kind of where those are to the front of the eye and then just freehand it and then you use that as a jumping off point to wrap the lid over it lid receding into the eye socket that line is very useful in capturing somebody's um, likeness and since we're looking up at her we're not seeing the thickness of the lid because we're just in a different position we're looking up so we're not seeing the the top of the bottom lid on the other portrait that we drew before this one we were able to see that 
this is too big. I think I need to scale it down. The exposed part of the eye is smaller. So just how I did a sketch session on the, the eye socket. Um, I did the same for the mouth, by the way. Take these out. I'm gonna double check that I have. Okay, but her head is up, so this needs to be kind of an upright angle now. Okay, let's get into the nose. I'm gonna judge how far away is from the eye to the bridge of the nose here. What goes out. And then we have, again, our three angles. Bridge of the nose, fairly short on her, fairly upright. Then a long, slanty angle. And then just a small variation for the ball of the nose. I want to make sure I don't get that nose too long, so I'm coming at it from the bottom, because I know this is my end point right here. So I'm going from here now up and see I'm going to get a too kind of pointy nose. So I'll have to keep working on that. I'm going not quite as angled. Let's say here, here, here. Eh, still not quite there. Let me find the wing of the nose, see if that changes anything. So sometimes we have to kind of monkey monkey bar our way to the answer. You know, like you get one grip with one hand over here, and then you try and grip over here, and hopefully um, it'll hand off. And if not, you might have to backtrack and come back over here. Making subtle shifts for these angles for the nose. Um, you know, our features, they really do carry our likeness. So it's totally warranted that you'd spend a lot of time on capturing them just right. But again, not on the expense of having good structure. I'm going to ignore those headband flaps for now. I'm just going to pretend like if there were none, if I could see the eyebrow, best guess, where would that be? So again, I'm trying to transit the thickness of the nose here. Let's get to the muzzle. So if I compare the base of the nose to the tip of the chin, I kind of see this sort of an angle. So we want to contain what's happening in here first so we don't go wildly outside of it. If we divide this section, by the way, in, in thirds, that's a useful thing to do. The bottom third is where the chin crease should be. Let's see how the corner of the mouth aligns. the eye, the line like that.
shading in the shape of the upper lip. So the upper lip, most of the times, not all the time, but most of the times it's angled down. So it'll be in shadow because most of the times the light will be coming from on top. chin here. See here I have to drop it down more again. That's no big deal. It's just how it is. And especially with with girls you got to be careful not to give them a man chin. So she does have a pronounced chin but if you make it just a little bit too big it's going to look too masculine. Try that for size. So and see where that shadow line is? That's kind of where we measure to anyways. So there is a bottom part of the chin and a top part of the chin. And when we do our thirds, this line where the shadow begins, that plane change, that is um, where the third measurement. So from here to here, that's one third. From here to here, that's one third. And then from here to here, that's another third. Okay. Now we got a pretty good structure for this one. And I could keep working on this, getting the the kind of cross contour shading happening and etc. So again, if you want to see that one finished, that's on Instagram. So at Cura Studios, um, you can find it there. Let me get to the next one. So here, a very different pose. I'm gonna actually zoom in on her. So here we have an upshot. Okay. Let's do 15 minutes. Here do we go. I'm gonna try a different pencil. There's a softer Prisma color. I might hate it. We'll see. So again, we begin with a head position. So not upright, there's an angle and we're looking up at her. So guitar pick shape. So when we place a simple guitar pick shape, um, it's great because it tells you, it, it gives, it, it lets you try on um, how big you want this drawing to become in your in your sketchbook on your drawing pad and where on the drawing pad you want it to be. Okay, so now look at this angle that I created here. I think I exaggerated that a little bit. No, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Let's just calm it down. A little bit here, not quite as exaggerated. Right where her hair is, her, the bangs are coming down, that would be the corner of her eyebrow. So that is that temporal ridge that gives us that swoop for the side of the side plane, the front of the side plane. If I find the middle point of the side plane. See how this is parallel to that? If I intersect the side plane like this, I now know here's where my ear will be. I also know that from the top of the ear, there will be the swoop coming down to the chin. And here, this is not a total profile. We're seeing a little bit of the other eye too. So let me draw this over here, nice and dark enough so you can see this. If we think of the head as an egg, and we're, we know that we're looking up at this egg. If we imagine there was a rubber band snapped around where the brow line is, 
this rubber band would be arcing up like this, right? That's really important um, because that's our plane change here. That's what I'm working on right here. So now I know that these brows here, they'll have to have a slight downward angle, right? So if I begin with this rubber band idea, I kind of pinch onto here and kind of pull it up, make that into more of an angle. It gives me now my brow corner and I know now how the brows align here, like what angle I need for them. Super handy. I sock it. Again, it's, it's a wishy-washy area. So I'm gonna look for, okay, where that lock is, that, that bang curl. And I'm gonna look for the highlight on her cheekbone. I find the brow and that. That's my best guess for the weirdo shape created by the eye socket from a profile view. Let me get my ducks in a row for my proportions. Again, I'm giving myself wiggle room here, not committing to that. Oh, and look at that. So I'm glad I did this division because now I aligned my top of the brow with the top of the ear, but check out what happened with my ear. I made that too small. See, that needs to come down further. Because as we've learned, the ear aligns with the top of the brow, base of the nose. I'm going to sketch in a nose just as a placeholder for now. And I'm looking now at the muzzle again. How much does the chin vary from the forehead? How much does the chin vary from that keystone area? And you can be super intuitive about this. Like you can pull out measuring implements if you need to, but you know what? We can trust our hands. Our hands, they often do just fine in making a guess. And they just have to make the first best guess because we can always improve on it. Okay, and so now let's work on the jaw. I'm not sure if I gave myself enough space here. I guess with 15 minutes, we don't have too much time to fret over it. Back of the jaw, length of the jaw, chin. Yeah, that looks really weird. So let's shift the ear back just a little bit more. And I forgot that this Prisma color pencil doesn't erase as nicely. So I'll have all my ghosty lines left over, which is fine. And so now I get half a more exposed underside of the jaw. And you see where that reflected light is under the jaw right here? That is where it joins the neck. That is where that shape ends. And again, it's at one of those forgotten shapes of the face that we artists tend to overlook and it's important. We need it. Don't pinch the back of the neck too much. So find your ear position and then give it some more room. See how it aligns with the nose where the cranium comes back out. So you see, I began one way, it keeps growing, but it's still, it's all linking up. So it's not a reason to freak out over if things start to get bigger than you intended them, um, just as long as they don't become like massively bigger and run off the page. If any of you have ever watched um, Julia Childs, um, that 
American lady who learned to do French cuisine and then she had her cooking show and you know often things just didn't go just the way she thought they would go and then she just made it work and I think that that's how drawing is too. Just make it work. Okay. Nasal bone, length of the nose, ball of the nose, so much more rounded nose in this model. Wing of the nose. And here this hooks under. So if you are just checking in to see what's happening here and you didn't catch the intro, I don't even think I said it this time on the intro, um, these sketch sessions, they're not me drawing perfect drawings for you to and all over. These sketch sessions are for you to draw along. They're practice sessions and they're purposefully short. They're purposefully um, made in a way where we can't produce a perfect outcome. I mean, maybe, you know, if you draw every day and you're at that level, your drawings will be a perfect outcome. But the, the, the whole point is that we practice together and, and not just like with a pressure of needing it to look perfect, but with the understanding that a lot of this might crash and burn. And as we do so, um, we'll stay mentally alert and we file away all that learning information like okay why did this not work out where did i run into um, roadblock what can i do next time so this is active learning rather than active performance And so if you find yourself drawing along and <laughs> you had your best intentions of seeing it as a practice session and now you find yourself getting all frustrated and flustered, you know, just a friendly reminder. We're just practicing not to um, say that we shouldn't care, but um, you know, these are short little drawings. They're our push-ups, and sometimes push-ups are nothing to put on the wall, nothing to frame, and sometimes they are. Let's see if I can get to the eye here. So I'm, I'm interested always in how does the eye align with the mouth? The eye shape varies. So what I like to do is I like to study master drawings. And I like to just copy just the shape of the eye, just to kind of become aware of, oh, interesting, that's a shape the eye takes on in certain positions. Because it's so hard sometimes to get away from our expectations of the eye needing to look like an almond shape. <laughs> Chris, I like your comment. <laughs> We should definitely add some cooking sherry. If you know, if the drawing is just like god awful, let's pour some cooking sherry over it and let's make a watercolor out of it. I'm sure we can make something interesting happen like that. I'd be into it. I should have slanted her forehead more. Uh, don't like this pencil and I can't erase it. Okay. Hmm. 
blocking in the hair shape here. And then she has this crown. So right now I'm kind of shading in, just hatching in some of the planes that are turned down. I'm hoping that will give me a bit more structure. Don't like that all my underdrawing stuff is just like so much showing. <laughs> well, Jacob, then you are on a roll, I'd say. I think that makes for a really regal drawing then. <laughs> and I don't know if you were there. We've drawn this model before, um, and this was from a photo shoot I did way back when, when I was doing a lot of paintings of, of queen archetypes, and this was, I had some really good photos from her. So I thought I'd return to one of these reference pictures. So sometimes when I find myself getting frustrated with my work, which is happening right this moment, like first of all, I get very quiet. <laughs> Second of all, um, I, I start to decide, you know what, let's just go for it. Let's just make some marks with chutzpah and see if, if I can pull it out. And sometimes I can, and sometimes like what just gave me such a hard time turns out to become a really cool drawing. And sometimes the the kind of darker marks just like make it even worse. And it's like, you know what, fine. <laughs> this one goes to the art gods. <laughs> like this is my offering, let's, let's light it on fire. Um, but you, you don't know unless you try. Um, Yes, Catherine, this will be, I, I keep those up unless I don't have permission from the models, but I try to get permission from our models. So this will be up and you can rewatch it and you can pause it, you can redo your drawing if one of the references were to your liking. Okay, let's draw this handsome guy. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit more. Okay, perfect. Last drawing of the evening. Let me set the timer. Okay. I feel like I need a swig of Gatorade or something. <laughs> okay, let's get started. So it's almost an upright head position and this one is facing the other way. Have you noticed all of the other ones were facing left? Let's go like this. And I switched my pencils again because that was bugging me. I like my lines to be erasable. Cranium, facial mask, jawline. See, and I, I tend to make my guitar pick shapes a little bit too long and pointy. So I'm kind of filing away that information. Like, oh, don't do that again. <laughs> Corner of the eyebrow. So not the end of the eyebrow, the corner of the eyebrow. That is where our side plane begins. This is swoop. It's imaginary, ain't really there, but it's useful. There is a um, sketch session where we talked in length about um, the structure. And I did a 
teaching segment up front where I showed you exactly what it is you need to look for. It's probably one of our first videos. The audio might be awful on that one, um, but I would suffer through it because it's some really good information. So if you're wondering like, how does she even draw the lines that she's drawing, it's all based on that structure. So for now, we talked about the eye socket. Here is that kind of pointy arrow shape that I singled out. It's the back of the eyebrow, that highlight around the cheek. And then you see that highlight kind of go under the nose on him. And then we have this recess, resetting, set, set back thing <laughs> to the nose. And there we go. And then I'm ghosting in a nose. Just kind of the placeholder for now. This might be a little bit big, but we'll we'll see. Okay, so now that I have this, let me just lay in the ear. So remember, top of the brow goes to the top of the ear. Bottom of the nose goes to the bottom of the ear. Halfway with the head. That's roundaboutish where the ear lives. And the ear ain't upright. See how it's not like this? There's a slight slant to how this attaches to the ear, to the side of the head, and how the ear lobe attaches to the side of the head. There's a backward angle there. Okay, so I'm gonna check out what's happening. You know what? Let me do the let me do my proportions first. Let's go there. So hairline, let's say that's right right around here. So now I'm taking my thirds. Hairline to brow. Brow to base of nose. That looks good. And then base of nose to chin. Not the bottom of the chin kind of where the shadow is. So you see the shadow on his chin. If he's like a perfect thirds um, person, then the shadow on the chin will fall right around here. So now that I have that, um, I'm gonna set my glabella Down. I'm gonna kind of commit to that here. And now I'm kind of looking, okay, this point in between his eyes, if I visually connect that to the crease above his chin, are they like upright or is there a lean to that? And the best, here's a little trick. You close one eye if you're in real life. You close one eye and you hold up a pencil and you see if that pencil, how that aligns. Okay, so if I make a straight line like this, his chin is set back. Not a ton, just a little. And then I'm kind of intuitively just gonna feel it out. Let's try this. So I don't know if our neighbors, like some of our back neighbors that we don't see very much, if they got a new dog or if they just have a friend visiting with a dog, that that dog started to bark. And then now our new-ish dog decided, oh, that's great. Let's, you know, let's just have a conversation. Um, yeah. Not going to go on for very long, though. Okay. Let's see. I think I want to work on the eyes a little bit. Place my eyeball. And so we're kind of looking at him from behind a slight bit. So he's turned away from us more. You know how the, the other model with the crown, she was kind of angling at us. So he's angling away from us a little bit more. Like very slightly, but that's why we see the eyes are differently. Plus he's squinting. Let's try this 
but this angle here that's important that's what you want to want to maintain and it's even beautifully laid out by the sun or rather the shade the shadow And this goes back and here we have the underbrow. Because this eye socket is receding into the head, if the sunlight is coming from above, if the room light is above, that will be in shadow because it's angled to turn away from the light. Okay, underside of the lid. Here's kind of where the eye socket would be. So here we have the imaginary rhythm from the ear, kind of to the underside of the um, cheek to the chin. And then we have here kind of the muscles and the fat, pa fat pads that make up the cheek. It's useful to ghost these things in. I, I do like drawing intuitively hand in hand with drawing with understanding the structure now now i'm aligning the the wing of the nose where that is attaching the face with the eye are they on top of each other actually that wing of the nose is in front of the eye so i'm gonna see if i follow this line up here there's a distance between the wing of the nose one angle, the second angle, which is longer, and then we have the third angle for the ball of the nose that curls and hooks under. We need that plane change for where the nose is facing down. And then we have this beautiful drop shadow. Okay, remember I mentioned it earlier, um, we can divide from the bottom of the nose to the chin into thirds. And that, especially in a closed mouth, is very useful. Let's see if I take that one. That seems about right. This is where the chin crease should be. And then this here is where the lip separation is. And then again, corner of the mouth. How does that align up? Pretty far back. And I'm not pressing hard yet, even though it's so tempting, you know, like the, the features, they're very satisfying to work on. And so we want to kind of um, lay down the land, just say how it is, you know, like this is where the lips are. Um, but I'm still keeping it erasable. I'm making my best guess. And I'm going to lean back later on, zoom out and see... <laughs> See what I've done. I think I want to pull this out more here.
And so, you know, if, if you find yourself in the situation where you thought you did your best, you thought you were being so diligent and you did your measuring and you did your alignment. And then, you know, when you lean back and you kind of zoom out and it's just like, ah, oh, it's not the person like it, I didn't hit the likeness. So that's when you have two options. You can get pissed off. And, and just like keep telling yourself stories like, like, I just can't drop profiles or you can go sulk or, you know, like all the things we do. And I do it too. Like, I'm not saying I'm a saint. I'm not saying like, you know, I have a halo. Uh, I have all those tendencies myself. The other option we have is to um, say, okay, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Let's see what we can do here. And you can go to work and just say, okay, what happens if I elongate this? Like, of course, you first would assess, well, what, what's the main problem? You know, is, is the muzzle set back too far? Is the muzzle coming forward too much? Is something in the length not right? And so you basically want to have this arsenal of questions. So questions are your best friends in art, um, not the answers. Um, the answers are, you know, they get you started. Like, oh, you want to know your proportions and you want to know about the structure. Those are your answers. But then those answers will lead you to conundrums. They will lead you to um, moments of like, oh, I didn't hit it. And so that's when your questions um, become your best friends. And so you just go your ro down your roster of questions and say, is my nose to lip distance right in comparison to the rest? And you just lean back, zoom out, glance up and down and make your best guess. And the more we do this, the better our adjustment guesses become. And the more often we can pull the cart out of the ditch, so to say. It's much more fun. It's much more useful. Um, and it keeps you coming back to your drawing pad. If you do the other part, the part that we have our inclinations, like the sulking, the, the, pencil throwing uh, maybe it's more dramatic uh, but it's not as fun actually it makes it harder for you to come back to your drawing next time and it's just you know it's just not nice to talk to yourself that way and, and we got to be on our own side we got to be our own cheerleaders and i'm always here for you to cheer you on so if you need somebody besides yourself to cheer you on, I will gladly take that job. That would be my badge of honor. That's right, Jacob. <laughs> you just try again. And you know, I think that's where you know if you're a real artist. And I use that in air quotes because, you know, that's a problematic term. But if you're a real artist, then failing is just you expect it. It's not going to derail you um, because you you want to be that. You want to engage with, with that part of you so badly that, you know, what, what is one bad drawing? What are a hundred bad drawings uh, when, when you have a lifetime of drawing? Anyway, so I didn't get very far in this one, but, you know, it looks like a pretty good um, beginning. Let me switch over. Where's my mouse? There it is. <laughs> Alrighty, so there you have it. Some terrible drawings, some fun drawings, and I hope you at least went through the motions and noticed, oh, I keep having this mistake. Um, so for me, it's always like this area, that's a challenge for me. And so by now I know this. And so if I had a whole hour of working on these drawings, I would then like slow down and really start to tinker with these shapes. And again, lean back, it's like, okay, how about now? Oh, is it too short? Let me make it shorter and let me make it longer. Tinker, 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 lean back. How about now? 
feels better or no that's not it try something else and that's why having the right tool is so useful you want to have something that stays erasable that doesn't make these dark fat grooves in your paper so um experiment with that too so just to wrap it all up um begin with your head position is it this way this way or that way then really study the eye socket structure note learn or kind of remember how it's at an angle there's a recess happening there and so the upper lid will be kind of sticking out beyond the lower lid so make sure you kind of pay attention to that if you have a really good reference image and you can see the you can really see the lids make sure that you give them thickness right depends on your position if you're looking up or down on the model um be aware of your landmarks, especially that beautiful rhythm from top of the ear to the cheek to the chin. It helps you kind of organize, like keep keep your facial features uh, on one part and your kind of jaw features, ear feature on the other part. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, keep your ear in alignment with the brow and in alignment with the nose. Even if the head tilts up, that still stays true. Um, the other thing I wanted to make sure I remember you to do is that you align everything. See, how does a tear duct align with the wing of the nose, align with the mouth? Does it intersect? Do they end at the same um, vertical? So alignments are your friend. And I think the last thing that I said was to pay attention to those forgotten parts, that strange looking shape underneath the jaw. And we didn't do it a lot um, because it got lost in the face. But if you do draw the neck, the back attaches higher than the front. And the same is true for where then the neck attaches to the rib cage. So think of your t-shirt collar lower in the front, higher in the back. And the same is true for up here. So that's all I got for you. Um, Heads up, next week, it's my birthday week, so I'm gonna be out of town, but I have fully intend to still draw, to still do a sketch session. It'll be just on a different day. I think it will be Tuesday, it might be Wednesday. So you better be on my email list because that's where you get the heads up on when I go live. And of course, it'll be recorded, so if you can't catch it, because it'll be a morning sketch session, really weird. But um, I'll try it. And if the Wi-Fi at the cabin where I go sucks, then I'll do a little recording and I'll upload a recording for you. There will be something there for you to learn from. And um, tomorrow I'll be on Instagram talking about how to improve your drawing skills. Like what do you want to do? How do you want to kind of really zero in? And so if you're wondering uh, about that, come on over at Kira Studios tomorrow at 1130. And to get on the email list, by the way, below this video where you, where you t um, click the see more it's like the description there is a link that will uh, lead you to a freebie you can sign up for a free four-day mini course on how to begin your figure drawing practice if you're wondering what it's even good for why would somebody want to do this um how to go about your drawing what tool to use etc etc um that's what the free mini course is for. And I'd love to have you on the email list because I tell fun stories there and I keep you motivated to draw. Um, you're so welcome. Glad you liked it. Okay, well, I'll see you next week one way or another and take care until then. Bye-bye.